Hello everyone. So in the previous video, we have seen the different categories in which we put numbers, right? So we have seen what are natural numbers, we have seen what are whole numbers, what are integers. We have also looked at what rational numbers are and what irrational numbers are. Now let's move on to study about the Euclid's division lemma. Before that, first let's try to understand what a lemma is. Well, a lemma is actually a proven statement which can be used to prove other statements. Right? So in general, a lemma is used in proving of other important statements. Before moving on to the Euclid's division lemma, first let's recall the long division process which we have used in our previous classes to divide any larger number by any two digit or a larger than two digit number. Because we'll use the long division method to reach the conclusion of the Euclid's division lemma. So let's take an example and try to recall the long division process for dividing any number by any other number. Right, so let's take the example here and here we'll try to divide the number 3640 by the number 15. Right, so let's try and divide the number 3640 by the number 15. Now recall how we do the long division process. We'll, we'll first try to divide the first number, first digit by the divisor. Now here we know that 15 does not go into 3, right? So we'll take one more digit from the dividend. So we get the number 36. Now 15 goes two times into 36 to give the number 30, right? So we can divide the number 36 and 15 goes two times to give the number 30. Now when we subtract these two values, we get the remainder, right? So here the remainder is 6. Now again, 15 does not go into 6. So we'll bring down the next digit from the dividend and we'll make this number 64. Now 15 goes into 64 4 times to give the number 60. So we'll write the number 4 in the quotient and we'll multiply 15 times 4 which gives us the number 60. Now when we divide the number 60 from 64, we get the remainder as 4 again. Now again we, have, we are in the same situation, right? 15 does not go into 4. So we'll bring down the next digit from the dividend. So this gives us the number 40. Now we know that 15 goes into 40 two times to give the number 30, right? So when we subtract the number 30 from 40, we get the remainder as 10. Now there are no more digits in the dividend left and the number 10 is less than the divisor which is 15. So now here we have completed our division process because the remainder that we have got is a number which is less than the divisor and there are no more digits which are left in the dividend which is 3640. So we have reached the final result and we have got the quotient value which is 242 and the remainder value which is 10. Now what have we done here? Well, we have divided the number 3640 by the number 15 to get the quotient as 242. What does that mean? Well, if we multiply 15 into 242 and add the remainder as 10, right? Because after dividing 3640 by 15 and getting the quotient as 242, we were left with by a remainder 10. So I can rewrite this whole process in one more terms, right? So I can say 15 into 242, right? 15 into 242 plus the remainder plus the number 10 should give me back the original number, right? Which is 36, 40. So if you think about it logically, this is just the same division process, right? We divided 36, 40 by 15 and it went 242 times leaving the remainder as 10. Right? So I can represent this division process in this manner as well, right? where the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder value gives me the value of the dividend or the original number. So this is what the Euclid's division lemma tells us that for any two numbers a and b, right? any two numbers a and b where a is the dividend and we are trying to divide the number a by the number b, we can represent this division as a is equals to b into q plus r. So we can represent any two numbers a and b as a is equals to bq plus r, where q is the quotient 
and R is the remainder. Now there is one very important condition here which says that R should be greater than or equal to 0 and less than the value of the divisor which is B. This is what the statement of Euclid's division lemma tells us that any two numbers A and B can be represented in this format. One more very important thing that the Euclid's division lemma tells us is that this representation of the numbers A and B is unique given the condition R is greater than or equal to 0 and R is less than B. So what the Euclid's division lemma tells us is that the set of values Q and R right which you have used to represent the value A as B Q plus R this set of values Q and R are unique. Let's try to prove this. So let's assume in the given scenario that we have that we can have another value of Q and R. We can find another value of Q and R or another set of values of Q and R using which we can represent the value A in this format B Q plus R. To do that let's represent this in a different way. So we'll represent this as 15 into so 242 will break into two numbers right 241 plus 1 plus 10 is equals to 36. 40. So I can write this right because 241 plus 1 is 241 plus 1 is 242. Now if I expand this I get 15 into 241 plus 15 plus 10 is equals to 3640 or I can also write 15 into 241 plus 25 is equals to 36 40. So here what we have done is we have found out one more value of Q and R in which we are able to represent the number 3640 divided by the number 15 as A is equals to BQ plus R right. So here the set of values of Q and R are 241 and 25. Right, 241 and 25. And the original values that we had were 242 and 10. But notice one very important thing here. The value R1 which is 25 is actually greater than the value of B which is 15. Right, the value R1 is 25 and the value B is 15. So the value of R1 is greater than the value of B which is 15. So the condition R is greater than or equal to 0 and less than B does not stand true here, right? Now if you continue this process to find different sets of values of Q and R, you'll find such sets. But in all those values, you'll never get this condition to be true. So there is only a unique set of value in which the condition R should be greater than or equal to 0 and less than B stands true. So this is what the Euclid's division lemma tells us that for any two integers a and b, any two positive integers a and b, we can represent the value a as bq plus r where the set of values of q and r are unique and the condition that r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than b stands true. So now let's use this Euclid's division lemma to solve a couple of problems. So let's use the Euclid's division lemma to solve a couple of questions. So in this question, what we have to do is we have to prove that any positive even integer can be represented in the form 2q where the value q is an, an another integer and any positive odd integer can be represented as the value 2q plus 1 right. So now what does the Euclid's division lemma tell us? The Euclid's division lemma tells us that for two integers a and b two positive integers a and b I can represent the value of a as bq plus r where q is the quotient right and r is the remainder. Also the value of r should be greater than or equal to 0 and less than the value of the divisor right less than the value of b. Now for to figure out if a given positive integer is an even number or an odd number what is the procedure that we follow? Well we try to divide the number by 2 and see if the number is divisible, divisible by 2. If the number is divisible by 2, we say that the number is an even number. And if the number is not divisible by 2, we say that the number is an odd number. So now, 
what we'll try to do is we'll take the number a to be any general positive integer and we'll try to divide the number a by the number 2. So here we'll assume the value of b to be 2. So I can rewrite a as 2q plus r where r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 2. Now notice this inequality. Using this, I can conclude that there are two values of r, right? So the r has to be greater than or equal to 0. So one value that r can assume is 0. The second value that r can assume is 1, right? r cannot take any other values. Why? Because the number r has to be greater than or equal to 0 and it has to be less than the divisor, which is the number 2 here. So the values of r here, the range of the values of r is two numbers, 0 and 1. So let's represent the number a by taking the value of r to be 0. So I get the number a as 2q, right? And if I take the value of r as 1, I get the number of, I get the value of a as 2q plus, right? So what does this actually tell us? This tells us that when I divide the number a by the number 2, I get the quotient as q and I do not get any remainder here, right? The remainder is 0. In other words, I can say that the number a is divisible by the number 2 because I am not getting any remainder here, right? So in this case where a is equals to 2q, the number is even, right? I can say that the number is even because when divided by the number 2, I get no remainder. So the number has to be divisible by 2 or in other words, the number has to be even. And in this case, when I'm dividing the number a by the number 2, I get some quotient q and I get 1 as the remainder, right? So this number, I can say that this number is going to be an odd number, right? Because when I'm dividing this number by 2, I get some quotient and the remainder as 1. So this is how we can use the Euclid's division lemma to solve such problems where we, where we have to prove some other mathematical statements.